I'm in T-Bay services northbound on the M6. Had a bit of an issue with my with my van. Way down there you can see those belt pulleys. Well, you shouldn't be able to see them. And somewhere in there, perhaps you can see, is the belt. It's come off, there's down to one rib. The engine started boiling. I'm waiting on the tow truck because I can't get a belt on a Saturday evening in the middle of Cumbria. I'm down underneath the engine now, got the belly pan off and I can see clearly what's going on. Up here, that's the water pump, that's the alternator, and the main drive pulley is this one here from the bottom end. This one here only has two out of three bolts on it, and that could have caused a very slight wobble in the water pump. The water pump feels okay, doesn't seem to be any play in the bearings or anything, it feels on quite tight still. but. I'd rather, I'd rather take one of them out and try and get three of them as replacements. You can see bits of belt everywhere. The belt, in fairness to it, was holding up on two ribs by the looks of it. It's a wonder. It's a wonder. But hey. Two ribs. I've broken all of the seals on the bolts by putting a big Allen key into the centre and then levering the small one against the big one to loosen it so it can come across, but the big one holds the bolt, holds the pulley from spinning. And once you have them out, you'll notice there's a couple of shims here, and so there's no tensioner on this pulley system. So to tension it, what you do is you make the V between the two pulley blades, or the two sides of the pulley, thicker or thinner, by adjusting the number of shims. see what's in there and that gets this belt off oh. that gets that little belt off it's a gate 6206 MC and so here you can see this is the inside of the pulleys and that's the outside and what happens here is depending on how many shims you put on the inside Depending on how many shims you put in the inside, the belt will ride further in or further out on that V. And that's how you get your tension right, and it's just trial and error when you're putting it together. And typically, to get the alternator belt off, you'd loosen this one, which is the alternator tensioner belt, bolt, the alternator tensioner bolt, and the one up above, which is the pivot bolt. And there's a... So you loosen them, and then you can push the alternator back in against this big spring, which is the tensioner spring, and ease the belt off. Over the last week I've been waiting for parts to come, a new manifold for the coolant system and the alternator belt. In the meantime, the tank's emptied out again, the coolant tank. So what I reckon the problem is, is this manifold here, this is the replacement manifold, it takes an orientation like this and replaces this one down here, that's the, one of the bolts for it, and that's where the, one of the sensors, one of the oil temperatures, or the water temperature sensors goes in. So that's it there, so I'm sure it's going to be difficult to get it out, but I've got the radiator lifted out, lifted forward, so it should just be a matter of unscrewing it, swapping it out. Before I do that, I've got to get underneath and let one of the hoses loose to let the water out of the coolant system. So you can see some pink staining here on the side of the cylinder head, and again, Underneath, on the water pump, you can see some pink staining as well, and that's a good indication that there's leaks coming out there. But, when the engine wasn't running, and when it was laying up, the drips were all coming from the top of the oil filter, just there. You can see the drip coming down, and I I think that's coming from that manifold, so I'm going to swap it out. So I've disconnected it from the hose at the front, and the two connectors on the sides, and just behind there, you can see the last glow plug on the right and I've disconnected the strap cable on that because I think I'm going to need that off to get it out. So i just loosen that with my finger now and it wraps all the way around this manifold. What's going to catch me out is that I can't see to get the Jubilee clip that's on the bottom of the 
on the bottom hose of the that's attached to the manifold. Um, the bolts were quite easy to get out, they're just a 10mm head. On the left hand side here where my finger is, there's a little, you can almost see it on the tip of my finger, it's, it's a earth cable that goes to here. You just have to disconnect that as well, remember to put it back on. So somehow, maybe if I can get this hose out from the bottom, disconnect from the bottom, pull it all the way up, that'll do it. In the end, the only way to get the manifold loose at the top, or to get the bottom hose off the manifold, was to release it at the bottom of the engine, at the other end of the hose, and then it gave you a bit more space to pull the hose upwards, and that worked. With the old one out, and compared to the new one, the old O-ring had a load of schmoo on it, and I suspect that if it was leaking, that's where it was leaking. The o-ring stayed stuck to the head when I took it off. New one, the o-ring's kind of welted in and I fitted the sensors back in ready to put this back together. So this is the hose that I pulled up from the bottom and there's the manifold on the, on the cylinder, cylinder head side. So I'd completely say that the only way to get this done is to take the hose off at the bottom. I've got the new one in, the hose reattached from above, and I'll just have to manoeuvre it into place. And that's pretty much it. The o-ring is in position. And I faced off the engine block manifold with a piece of sandpaper, memory paper on a stick. So when I'm tightening up these little allen keys, allen bolts here. What I do to get a grip, otherwise the pulley just spins, is I put one allen key into this little hole on the edge and then tighten against that. I use that as a lever to tighten against. And that's about it really. There's not much to these other than that. Tighten that one up and then put that little belt back on and then tighten up that one in the same way. You can either put the allen key through the hole in the center or from one allen key to another to tighten it up. There's the tension on that belt. And there's the tension on that belt. You know, there, you can turn it about 45, about 90 degrees even there. Um, and it's not at the limit of its play. There's about another quarter inch there. Temperature's gone up to 90 and it seems to be holding there on the idle. Nothing seems to be going wrong. I'm going to leave another five minutes and see what happens. If it's going to overheat, it's going to overheat um, in the next five minutes like it did before. But there's no drips coming from anywhere on the engine. Everything looks good and dry. I'm pretty happy with it. So I've let it run there for about 30 minutes. Got the temperature up, let it run a bit more. Don't see any leaks, don't see any drips. Belts have held up okay. Check the tension on the screws that hold on that pulley that seems okay as well everything seems okay the level in the tank stayed constant the coolant so I'm happy to just put it back together now I'll get the front on first the grill and then the belly pan if you like this video or if you thought it was useful um, give us a thumbs up or a, a subscribe I and mean, appreciate it thanks for watching